Hello, I am Jeff Buys Cars and this is a bonus video. This is my last day with the Jag. I'm actually taking it up to the gentleman that has bought it from me off of Facebook Marketplace after a number of non-starts with trying to sell it on eBay. So, now that the hurrah is all over, I can give you my actual personal opinion on the Jag. Um, two videos in one. First up, why I love the Jaguar XK8, swiftly followed by why I bloody hate the Jaguar XK8. And uh, who wins? Well, you decide. It's a stupid car that is a big, ridiculous coupe that's not built very well, that's hanging on the coattails of all the good things that Britain did back in the day, like making Spitfires and winning World Cups and doing stuff in wars that we absolutely shouldn't still be harping on about in 2022. I know this car was built in 1998, but it's the same thing. We're harping back to the design of the E-Type because that was so good. And we've got a Spitfire on the dashboard made out of wood because that was so good. Why not innovate? Why not do something cool and new for Britain instead of saying, look, here's yet another celebration of all the things that Britain once did. Like the modern minis with their ridiculous Union Jack rear lights. Nobody cares anymore, except maybe in China, which actually is the market that both Jaguar Land Rover and Mini are trying to sell all their cars in. So maybe it is relevant there. It's pastiche. It's, it's like a version of its former self that never actually existed get a little bit of philosophy there, but I just find it ridiculous. Right, on to the more practical reasons why I hate the Jag. It's too small. I'm not even a particularly big man, and it's too small for me. I couldn't drive this with a hat on. I like to be able to drive a car with a hat on. Um, what else? It's got a roof. What is the point of a large coupe like this with a roof? It needs a giant sunroof. It needs a rag top. It needs something. I know they did a convertible. I couldn't afford to buy a convertible. I got in this car and the day I drove it home, I was like, what is this all about? It's too small inside. It's too big outside. The roof's too low. The door's too long. The seat's too high. The back's too small. The front's too big, but there's still no space. And there's too much wood. There is a lot of wood in here. I hate the fact it's a big old burbly V8 because we just put V8s in things because we're British and a V8 has been good ever since the Rover V8 which was built which was another one of those engines that arrived in like 1923 and stayed in cars until like 1998 funnily enough the Rover V8 yeah it just stayed from the beginning of time until the Range Rover P38 I hate the fact that it's got a display that is utterly useless. I hate the fact that it's got a giant dial there for the oil and then a giant clock and then a giant battery display and nothing actually useful in front of you. I hate that I click through here and it's so old fashioned like a Motorola StarTac telephone. But come on, it's 1998. My Volvo does it better than this and my Volvo's two years older. I got the range. I got the amount of fuel used in gallons. Nobody uses gallons. We buy fuel in litres. Also, it's definitely not in limp mode right now. It's just nothing about it makes any sense. The aircon and the heated seats and the fog lights and the traction control and the hazard lights and the tape deck and all the display for that are all in one place, just jumbled together in a big mush. Why couldn't they have just compromised on the Spitfire wing and made a display that was actually useful? I hate the fact that it's not even that old and the leather seats are all completely cracked. I hate the fact that it's not even that old and the headlining is falling down and nothing seems like it was built very well. All the glue seems to have collapsed, all the things on the A-pillars, everything seems to be falling off. Again, my Volvo is two years older. My Volvo was half the price of this when it was new and my Volvo has done more than three times the mileage of this car and my Volvo is in better condition inside. The window switches are naff, the mirror switches are naff. Is that enough for you? Right, now let's move on to all the reasons I love the Jaguar XK8. It's got this phenomenal wooden dashboard, which I'll have you know, is shaped to capture the glory of the Spitfire from World War II. The plane that brought so much victory to Britain. The plane that the country is founded on. The plane that everything about Winston Churchill and that stiff upper lift, and let's just crack on and do it. The plane that is, is, is really the founding father of all that great Britishness that we love. 
It doesn't matter that it's not really built very well because it's British and it's got a Spitfire on the dashboard. It doesn't matter that the dials don't really tell you anything. Did Douglas Badder need to know anything about his Spitfire or did he just lose his legs and get on with it? He just lost his legs and got on with it. So we shouldn't be complaining about the fact that the display is not very good and the heated seats are sort of in the wrong place. The thing I love the most about the Jaguar XK8 is Fuck me, it is one of the best looking cars of all time. It has to be, especially now I've removed that front number plate. The lines that Jeff Lawson created when he embodied the very greatness that was the Jaguar E-Type. And he came up with the XK and he finished it and everybody said, that's how you design a coupe. And it's been copied by every manufacturer ever since. The Aston Martin DB9 that came afterwards and every Ferrari copies the lines that were penned by Jeff Lawson with the Jaguar XK8. It has to be one of the greatest looking cars of all time that you can drive daily. You could drive this car every day if you could afford the fuel bill. The wooden interior and the wood on the steering wheel perfectly complements each other despite the fact that the wood on the gear knobs is a slightly different shape but maybe they ran out of trees. I've talked a little bit about the fact that it's a big wallowy V8. But you climb in this car on an evening when you've had a hard day and it is genuinely, I get the same feeling climbing in this car at the end of a long day that Mrs. Jeff gets when she puts her dressing gown on when she gets home from work. Is your missus one of those women that just gets home and immediately the dressing gown goes on? Had a long day, dressing gown. In a bad mood, dressing gown. Time of the month, dressing gown. That's the Jaguar XK8. It's just wonderful. It feels like it doesn't matter how shit the world is around me because inside here, I'm totally insulated from all the balls that's going on around us. And right now, the balls that's going on around us is significant. What you need is a big, old-fashioned luxury coupe with a fat V8 engine, a load of wood and a Spitfire inside it to lift your spirits on a bad day. It's wonderful. You park this car in any car park and it looks the part. And yet I paid £500 more for this car than I'm actually selling it for because I misjudged the market completely and I just trusted what Chris said to me. And I think he did quite well out of me this time, but I'll get him on the next deal. You could buy a running and driving MOT'd Jaguar XK8 for £2,000. And I know because the man that's having it off me has paid £2,000 for it. Why not? In a world that is full of turmoil and uncertainty, get yourself a little bit, a little slice of your own personal automotive heaven with a Jaguar XK8 coupe with all its wood and leather and its luxuriousness and those fantastic lines. So, where does that leave you then? You've seen my video, you've seen both sides of the argument. What do you think? Is it one of the finest cars ever made? Or is it just another pastiche on British greatness that wasn't very good when it was new and is shit now? Let me know in the comments while I try and work out why it's in limp mode. <laughs>